The NBA has exiled the notorious cheapskate Robert Sarver, who is also the majority owner of the Phoenix Suns, for one season and fined him $10 million as a penalty for the findings of the Watcha Lipton report. Aside from that, Sarver cannot have any role with his club on the business or basketball front. A temporary governor will be appointed in his place to serve for the duration of the suspension, and he cannot rep the team publicly or privately. An investigation into the Phoenix Suns spawned as a result of the Baxter Holmes ESPN piece that came out in November of 2021 detailing a hostile workplace environment with the Phoenix Suns. Now, investigators talked to over 300 employees, current and former, and they also didn't get to speak with over 100, but the Suns did drop their non-disclosure agreements with employees, current and past, for this investigation to proceed. Now, among some of the findings of this report were that Sarver said the N-word at least five times and defended the use of it at least once in an email by stating that the word ended with the letter A. He also was told as far back as 2004 to not say that word. Sexually harassing women in the workplace was also something reported credibly in this. Um, one example was that he told an employee who got a breast augmentation one year when he passed by her in the hallway, hey, you get an upgrade this summer? Inappropriate comments towards other employees, nonetheless a pregnant woman. For example, he told her she wouldn't be able to do her job properly soon and just bullying other employees in front of their co-workers. Robert Sarver is the source of toxic waste that's seeped through to the lower levels of the Phoenix Suns. He's the reason why people like team executives feel they have the right to mistreat other workers and that emotionally wounds people. Nobody wants to work with and for people that don't treat them right. Now, did the NBA get this right? Not in this life. Robert Sarver should have been suspended indefinitely for the act alone of exposing his dingus when a male employee was close by on his knees retrieving something. This man is a menace to the workplace. The NBA should have also explored the removal of some draft capital because they've taken some of those for a whole lot less. Now, a lot of people are going to be thinking, how does the league kick out a guy like him? They already did with Donald Sterling in 2014, and now Steve Ballmer owns the Clippers. Well, as Ramona Shelburne explained brilliantly on the Sterling Affairs on ESPN podcasts, his wife, speaking of Donald Sterling, Shelley, owned half the team, and she got his doctor to declare him mentally unfit, and this helped facilitate a sale to Steve Ballmer at the time as well. Sterling was also having an affair with a woman named V. Stiviana, which possibly motivated some of Shelley's moves, but nonetheless, it got done. But in this scenario, I don't see the NBA having an ally like it did in Shelley Sterling. And for that reason, I hate to say it, but anyone who cares about the NBA and the people who work with the Phoenix Suns are going to have to put up with Robert Sarver. And he doesn't deserve a place in the league, and that's what's most unfortunate.